right, so uh, we're still on 6.2 here where I'm right triangle tray again. I'm going to just give you a whole bunch of examples here to solve. So um, in this one, it says solve the right triangle for all the unknown parts. So um, side A is 12.3, um, angle A then is 20 degrees. If I know this is 90, I don't know B, C, and I don't know this angle down here. Well, remember, triangle has 180 degrees, so it's 180 minus 90 minus 20, and whatever's left over, which is 70 degrees, happens to be that angle down there. So all I need to do is find the missing sides, and now that I know every angle, I can use Sokotoa, sine, cosine, and tangent to figure this out. So I'm going to do tangent. Tangent of 70. Opposite is B over adjacent, which is 12.3. So I multiply by 12.3 on both sides to get 33.79 is B. So I can either A, now do the Pythagorean theorem to find C, or I can just uh, do another one to find the answer. Um, I'm just going to do Pythagorean theorem to find the answer here. This is 12.3, so it's A squared, which is 12.3 squared, plus B squared, which is 33.79 squared equals C squared. So it's 1293.05 equals c squared, so just square root both sides to get roughly 35.96. So we're going to solve this for all the missing parts. 15.58 um, is A, don't know angle A. Okay, um, beta is 55 degrees, don't know B and C. But I can find A because the triangle is 180 degrees. So I do 180 minus 90 minus 55, so I know that that's 35 degrees now. And once again, because I know all of these, um, now I can use Sokotoa. And I'm just going to look at 55 again. I'm going to do tangent. And the reason why I'm going to do tangent again is because tangent is opposite over adjacent. It's B over 15.55. So multiply by 15.58 on both sides and I get a roughly 22.25 and because now I know two sides and the right triangle I can use Pythagorean theorem so it's 15.58 squared plus 22.25 squared which gives me 737.8 equals c squared so I can square root both sides so you get about 27.16 and once again you know if you're doing it right because it's the longest side c is the longest length so just something to keep in mind when you're doing these. Okay. Okay, so next one, solve all the unknown parts. I know the angle A is 41 degrees. I know that that's 90 because it's a right triangle. I know side C, which is 10. So to find this angle down here, once again, I know a triangle has 180 degrees. So 90 minus 41. From that, we get 49. So this is 49 degrees, no problem. I'm going to use sine of 49 degrees. Why? Because it's opposite, which is B, over hypotenuse, which is 10. So I multiply both sides by 10 to get my answer. Could I have used something else? Yes. Could I have used cosine or tangent? Yes. It's just what I decided to use. You're still going to get the same answer and you need to keep that in mind when you're doing these. Okay? Um, so this is 7.55. Um, now I can use um, Pythagorean theorem again, except A is what I don't know. I know B is 7.55 and I know C is 10 squared. So it's actually A squared equals 57.0025, which equals 100. So to solve for A, because that's what I need, I try to get A by itself, so I have to minus by 57.0025 on both sides. So I get A squared equals 42.9975. So I square root both sides and get about 6.56 as my answer. So now if I'm given two side lengths, um, and no angles. So I have A, I have C, but I don't have B. Well, I can find all the side lengths now because I can use the Pythagorean theorem to do that. So I know A, I don't know B, and I know C. Well, A squared, I end up getting 408.04. .04. C squared, I end up getting 2575.56. 
So to get b by itself, I'm minus 408.04. So I get b squared equals 2167.52. And I square root both sides to get 46.56. So now I know all the side lengths. Because I know all the side lengths, now when I go to solve the problem, I can use the inverse tangent, inverse sine, or inverse cosine of everything in order to get the answers. That's that negative 1. So I can do sine of negative 1, or cosine of negative 1, or tangent of negative 1 in order to um, get the right answers, basically. So to find the angle, I'm going to do cosine of beta. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I would do cosine of negative 1 of 20.2 over 50.75. That gives me 60.54 uh, for b. So now, if a triangle has 180 degrees, 90 minus 60.54 um, from that 180, and they got 23.46 degrees uh, left over. So a giant Ferris wheel is 60 feet in diameter, um, and has the revolutions of uh, one revolution every five minutes. At the bottom of the Ferris wheel sits two feet off the ground. Write an equation that gives the height of a rider H in terms of the time since the start of the ride T. So I know that we have a giant Ferris wheel. I know that it is two feet off the ground. Okay. I also know that the diameter of the wheel is 60. So keep that in mind. I know that's two. Uh, so I know the diameter is 60, and that means I know the radius is 30. Just something to keep in mind. So one revolution equals five minutes. So uh, one revolution would be the same as 360 degrees. So 360 degrees uh, every five minutes is what it goes. So to figure out what how far it goes every minute, um, I may get uh, just divide it so it goes 72 degrees every minute, roughly. And since t equals time, we are talking about an angle of 72t. What that means is the time that it's moving, it's 72t, that distance that it's going. So it's 72t. So to do this in terms of a triangle, I know that that angle that we get is 72 degrees times t. And I also know that the to form that triangle there that's going to be a radius from the center which is 30 degrees as well. So how do I find that height? I know the height is going to be 32 um, minus um, whatever that little height is because from here down is 32 degrees and I don't know what that little missing part is because that's 30 and that's 2 so it's 32 minus that h that little h. So the triangle is 32 minus h, because I don't know what that is, but I know the whole thing is 32, and I know that that little part is what I want, so it's 32 minus h. I know that that's 30, and I know that that's 32 degrees times t. So to solve this, I do cosine, and the reason why I do cosine is because I have the adjacent um, over hypotenuse, so it's cosine of 72t equals 32 minus h over 30. And I will finish this when I come back. I want to make sure I have enough time to go over it correctly. So I'll finish this problem when I come back.